Welcome to Trinity to Go, a ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church in downtown Bismarck. I'm Pastor Mark Narum, and I am so glad that you have found your way to worship with us this day as we gather to worship in this week, the week of the Holy Trinity. We gather today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you join me in our prayer of the day? We pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in the endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading that I am going to share with you this day is actually the Gospel reading. And the Gospel today comes from the third chapter of the Gospel according to John. Jesus' miracles prompts Nicodemus to visit him in secrecy. Jesus tells him about being born of the Spirit and about the Son who has been sent by God to save. Our reading this day is from John 3 beginning with the first verse. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you were a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I have said this to you. You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel and yet do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading, and actually the reading that I will be preaching from today, is from the book of Ezekiel. The Hebrew word rendered as ruach means spirit, wind, or breath. This reading plays on the different meaning of the word. Just as the dry bones in Ezekiel's vision are given new life, flesh and breath or spirit, so God will give the exiles God's own spirit and will bring them home to the land of Israel. A reading from the 37th chapter of the gospel or the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were ma very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord, you know. 
Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones. Say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and I prophesied. Suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there was sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up, our hope is lost we are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from graves. O my people, I will put... My spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your, own so oil, on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So is this time about the past or the future? How does the present come into focus in the midst of our worship? So here we are gathering to worship in the midst of Holy Trinity Week, a time within the church where we focus on the mystery of the Trinity. But as I prep this, we're also heading into the Memorial Day holiday which for some is a big kickoff to the summer season. Summer has begun, begun, it means swimming, it means camping, it means boating and fishing and so many more things. It means that school is out, that graduations have happened or are happening. But it's also a time of remembering, right? Those who gave their lives in military service defending their country, so there will be programs at cemeteries, flags placed on grave markers of veterans, speeches, flyovers, and much more. Truth be told, for many of us, it's also become a time of making trips to graveyards to clean up graves of loved ones, not just veterans parents and grandparents, for some people, a time to clean up the graves of their kids as well, to leave flowers to remember. This weekend, it seems that there is a whole lot competing for our attention. Today, I'm focusing on the text from Ezekiel. Now, I want to be honest with you, this was not one of the texts that is assigned for Holy Trinity Sunday. As a matter of fact, it was an alternate text that was assigned last week for Pentecost week. But I'm drawn to this text because of its strong imagery, its emotional impact if you allow yourself to fall into the imagery that is presented in the story. This text, this story, has an incredible claim of God's faithfulness and restoration, even when it looks like all is hopeless. So do you know hopelessness? 
Have you ever journeyed through a chapter in life where your very soul felt dried to the core? Where all emotion has been sucked out of you, joy was gone, and there wasn't a glimmer of hope. You might not even have enough energy to lift you up so that you can even feel despair. It's just a complete emptiness. Maybe you are a veteran who has heard too much and seen too much. Maybe you are one whom death has visited too close to your very own doorstep, taking someone that you love deeply, leaving behind just a hollowness. Maybe it was something that I can't even imagine that has left you feeling empty, lost, wondering if you are still really alive. Well, that's where we find the chosen people. They are at a spot of loss and despair. Babylon, the great powerful country, has come in and they have defeated Israel. Eventually, they destroy the temple. They pack up a bunch of people. They march them away back to Babylon, including the prophet Ezekiel. Now, early on, if you read the book of Ezekiel, what you see is the prophet is pointing out to the people their sins and their sinfulness, the way they have turned from God. Now, that same prophet is going to give them this incredible vision that God has shown him. It is meant to be a vision of hope. And the image is powerful. Imagine, if you will, as far as an eye can see, is a valley. It's not empty. As far as your eye can see, that valley is filled with bones. Bone after bone after bone, and it is not just bones, it is dry bones. There is no question. There's no life out there. There's not a bit of breath. This is death upon death upon death. And then comes the question from God to the prophet, Oh, mortal, can these bones live? Questions are powerful. Questions stop us and they make us think. They open up our minds to possibilities that at first blush we don't even imagine. Who could ever imagine that a valley filled with bones could come to life? It has never been seen before. It is not part of our experience. And the prophet says, Oh Lord, you know. I don't, in my mind, hear those words as a solid acclamation of believing that God can do anything. I hear them more as trembling, as wondering, as trying to figure out what God is going to do. In this vision, God does not work alone. God says to the mortal, mortal, prophesy, prophesy to the bones. And he does. And then it begins to happen. Bone to bone, sinew begins to come on the bones and then flesh. And then all of the sudden skin and there is a whole multitude standing. Can you see them? Can you imagine it down into that valley? And then God says again, mortal, Mortal, prophesy to the breath, to the wind, to the spirit. Prophesy that it would come into them and they would have life. And the breath came, the ruach, the spirit, and they were filled and they were lived and they lived. Death became hope, life, hopelessness and despair turned into something new. This vision is all about knowing 
to our very core, dried up as we might feel in any moment that God is the living God of our lives and he cares for us, cares for us all the way beyond heaven and earth. Where we only see death and despair and loss, God creates a new day, a new possibility. God continues to bring life from death today. God who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. God who is Creator and Redeemer and Sustainer. God comes to us by the power of the Holy Spirit that we might come to know the Son who died that we might have life and have it abundantly. However you are spending this weekend. Whether it is remembering the fallen from wars past, whether it's remembering loved ones by, by placing flowers at graves, remembering by gathering with friends and families at picnics and celebrations, whatever it is, remember this. When it seems that all is lost, that all hope is gone, we are not alone. We worship and we follow a God who is life and who has the ability to bring life. Even when all evidence around us leaves us thinking that death has won. Remember the line from Paul, Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Know this. God wins. God wins, and God wins by bringing life, even in places that look dry and hopeless. Thanks be to God, this living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you pray with me? Holy God, we do give you thanks this day for all of the blessings that come from your hand. Lord, we thank you for the rain which has fallen, which means that grass will be green, gardens will grow, pastures will give sustenance to livestock, and crops will grow so that we may be fed. Lord, we thank you for those who have given their lives in service of this country. Bless those who continue to grieve their deaths. Lord, we pray for those for whom the pain is still raw. Lord, we also come before you this day asking that you would be with young people who have graduated. Walk with them into their future. Lord, we have friends and family who are sick or hurting or in need of your healing hand. Bless them. We lift their names to you now. Cover them with your love. And Lord, we pray for those who grieve, especially this day we lift before you the Roe and the Wolf family. Be with them. Lord, these things and whatever else you see that we need, we lift them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Join me now, if you would, in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, I've got a couple of announcements to share with you. Um, first of all, I'm going to put our address up. And I would ask that as always... Um, you would consider dropping a check in the mail to help support this ministry. It is your generosity. It is your faithfully giving of what God has first given you that makes it possible for us to continue to bring you Trinity to go. I would also invite you to consider letting other people know about Trinity to go. 
so that they too might hear a word of promise and God's hope and can continue to grow in their faith. Invite you to take a look at our website, some things that are coming up very soon. Um, we will be heading outdoor the first Wednesday in June will be our first worship service outside. I think that's June 5th and then the Sunday after that, June 9th, we will be out for our first Sunday worship outside. Know that we have chairs, but you can also bring a lawn chair if you would like and set it up. Um, um, it is a great day to be outside, a little more informal worship, to enjoy the beauty of creation. If it's raining, if there is lightning, we will be inside, whether it's a Wednesday or a Sunday. If the temperature is above 90, we will be inside. Other announcements are in our bulletin. You can find that at trinitybismarck.com. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope that someday you decide to join us here at Trinity Lutheran in person. Know that you will be welcome. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter where you've been, doesn't matter what has ever happened in your life. You are welcomed here because you are a beloved child of God. I'm Pastor Mark Narrow. It has been a blessing to be able to worship with you from Trinity Bismarck, Trinity Lutheran in downtown Bismarck. Now, please receive the blessing. Now, may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and always. Until we see you again, may God bless you and keep you. Amen.